So we're here with Bill Swislow at the north end of Foster Beach and Bill wrote Lakefront Anonymous. Today we're going to explore the rocks at the north side of Foster Beach and the wonderful carvings that are there. So before we take this tour, I just wanted to talk to you a couple minutes about what inspired you to write this book. Well, you know, I love the lake, I love the lakefront, but I also have this strong interest in vernacular art, folk art, art by people who probably didn't think they were artists, don't think what they're doing art, but who when they were hanging out on the lake decided to take a, a chisel or a jackknife and carve into these rocks. And, you know, I learned about them a long time ago, was sort of interested in them, you know, started noticing them, and once you start noticing them, you start noticing more and more of them. Um, and to me, they are sort of this, became this collective work of art, and I just got more interested in them. And um, about 15 years ago, a lot of these carvings were lost when the city did some lakefront reconstruction in the 2000s, and I began to think, well, maybe they won't be here forever. Right. Even though they're carved into rock, you would think they'd be permanent. And so I decided to start documenting them and started photographing them all up and down the lakefront, like 22 miles worth, and found realized eventually there were thousands of these carvings, yet they have almost no recognition. They're, they're always at risk of, you know, if nothing else, they're weathering away, but, but also being bulldozed away. So I thought, and a friend said, well, why don't you, why don't you do a book about right. them? And so thus the book, and you know, it's really, for me, it's a, it's a way of bringing some awareness to these you know, wonderful things that so few people notice. So it's funny you say that because you're right. I've been down here a thousand times. I've never seen them. What are your tips for our audience to like see them? Look down. <laughs> you know, okay. that, that's the main one. If you look down and you start seeing one or two, you'll start seeing more. Although I got to tell you, I've been doing this for a couple decades now. And, and just in the last month, I found a new car meet here at that's Foster awesome. Beach that I hadn't noticed because you know, depending on the sunlight and the weather, you know, sometimes they're easier to see, sometimes they're harder to see. That's perfect. Well, let's go take a look. Okay. Uh, you know, there are a number of these faces here at Foster Beach and all along the lakefront. Um, some of them are fantasy, like this is pretty obviously some kind of pirate. Um, some of them are historical. We walk up a little so bit. So, was this path always here like this? Do we know? Or so, do we know? Like, I yeah, just trying yeah. to visualize somebody there and how long it would take that and I don't so, know. so I've talked to a few carvers unfortunately no one carved up here but people who carved down south you know I, I, I carving like that probably must take in a day or two to carve um, limestone is fair which is what these rocks are uh -huh. is fairly soft so it's not that hard to carve um, but someone had to think of it right um, and then execute it but you know people would hang out here yeah and uh, bring a chisel and you know the other thing about this area is just for what's worth i mean this has been here since about 1958 because before before the middle 1950s it was just water and when they expanded lakeshore drive up to hollywood avenue they built this beach here other parts of the beach further south are much older but this is this is the most recent um, so none of the carvings here are, are from before 1958 and we know several of them are from 1958 because they have dates on them but so this is a fantasy, but here we have a lovely carving of Abraham Lincoln. The Abe Lincoln's really impressive. Um, there were a few other Abe Lincolns, but most of those have been lost when they uh, tore out the rocks elsewhere. So do we think Mike's the one that did that? Because no. it looks like something started here yeah, that may have gotten lost. Yeah, I out. think Mike, Mike did his own thing. <laughs> now, there are several carvings that, that I'm guessing are by the same person along here. Whether Abe is one of them, I'm not sure, but we'll see some up here that are by probably the same person. But, you know, there's just so many random things. Well, that's very nice in this. It's very well carved. The little building there. And then, you know, one of the nicer things to see is like the heart with the initials in it, um, of which there are, you know, I've photographed maybe a hundred of those up and down the lakefront. A lot of those. Um, for the Chicagoans out there, you have someone carved Frangos here, tribute to you know, these two rocks here are kind of ma masterpieces of, of carvings. One of the, the more just intriguing ones is the hand that someone decided 
to carve, uh, you, know, you can see a, a triple, quadruple life-size hand in the rock here. Exactly why they did. Oh, I can barely see this one. That yeah, a so squirrel, this is a squirrel right? sitting on a branch eating an acorn. Yeah, I mean, so some rocks, some some carvings persist. Other carvings weather and fade away. Um, unfortunately, I mean, the, the squirrel is just a, you can see it's a really delicate carving. And then next to the squirrel is this plaque. And and what I've determined. Oh, there's the squirrel too. Exactly. You have the squirrel. <laughs> that says 1958. Two fish, and it's very hard to see, but that I believe is a torso, so like a, a swimming thing. You know, someone's, so they, they carved a torso. I think that the squirrel and, and the plaque, and there's another carving up there, are by the same person, um, partly because they're all so accomplished. So here you have a longhorn spear. Um, again, a kind of a random topic for a, a uh, Chicago. Uh, you know, beach. for Chicago Beach, but someone carved this lovely longhorn steer right here. Given many walking tours now along, you know, both formal and. and so if you want a walking here. tour, give me a call and I'll hook you up. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. You've done schools, you've done private ones, you've done all kinds, right? I've done all kinds. And I'm sure there'll be some coming up next year uh, uh, when the weather's better. Although I don't mind being out here, you know, when it's not. Raining or snowing. There are very snowing. few people. It's kind of nice to It is. No, I walk with my dog here all the time. The poor dog <laughs> has to wait while I take pictures many, many times. She just waits patiently as I photograph these carvings or the paintings, which we, we talk about as well. So someone carved, you can see there's the sort of like a tower, a castle tower, and there's the hill. There's actually three hills that they carved. I mean, un not so important, but still nice as I love you, Taft, T A D. But this one is a little bathing beauty. This is probably my personal favorite of all the carvings that I've seen along the lake. I just think it's so sweet, I and it, it just it, it just epitomizes sort of the Chicago, you know, this this experience of being on the lakefront and carving, and someone carved, you know, this little figure. Uh, uh, you know, sitting down holding its legs, maybe maybe diving off the rocks, which you're not supposed to do, and sort of doing a cannonball. I don't okay, know. so now that you've said this and just look, yeah. look what I see. Yes. Everybody tilt their head to the yes. left, right? Yes. <laughs> that face. That could not have been that easy to carve. And of course, that's the cover of the book. Uh, Same image as on the I book cover. Got it. Yeah. Very good. I. <laughs> I generally believe that the, the vertical carvings had to be harder to make than the ones here. Because, you know, your car, it's just, it's easier just to sit here and mm -hmm. do that. You know, and people, you know, what they used, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, I know some people have told me they used a hammer and a chisel. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you could even use a, uh, a jackknife or uh, like a hammer and a sharpened nail to make carvings. And make so, the rock is what do you make of this? So is those this... are marks from the quarries. So okay. these rocks were quarried in Indiana for the most part. And when they would quarry them, I think they would drill these holes and then they would they could split the rocks. Okay. Um, yeah, so you'll see lots and lots of those marks uh, all along here. Very, very uh, common. So there's, you know, odds and ends. There's like, the re you can see a deteriorating profile right there. What does um, that say? Well, it says, it says uh, Charlie. Oh. And then underneath it, you can see it's, it's kind of the worst for the wear. You can see the nose and the mouth and the chin. Uh, it looks kind of like Thomas Jefferson on the uh, nickel, which yeah. which is relevant because of Lincoln, the Lincoln one did well, that. Okay. No, but more relevant is because, I mean, there are some nice names here, like Howard, uh -huh. very nicely carved. Hula, and there's a couple other Hulas along here. Hula called, carved, Hula's name was carved a few times. And in fact, you can't see it from here, but up there, there's the carving of the buffalo from the buffalo nickel. So, so I think do you someone, think that was the same person? I think, yeah, I think someone had had a buffalo nickel, mm -hmm. which although they, they, they weren't making anymore, were still in circulation and carved the Indian and carved the buffalo. And I also think so cool. this may be the same person who carved that Lincoln over there, just because of the style. It's kind of the way it's framed. Uh -huh, frame, and yeah. we'll see a couple others that are framed similarly that are probably, I think, by the same person. Well, there's a lot of great carvings. <laughs> so as I say, these 21 rocks, we haven't seen, we didn't, I didn't point out every carving, but there's 30 carvings that I've counted on here. 
but then they just continue as we go around the corner. Okay, so that's your challenge. 21 rocks, 30 carvings, yeah. find, find them. Find them, yeah, count them. Maybe we'll have to do a contest. Yes, <laughs> Tom loves Pat. This is a case, you know, you can see this brown paint where, where the uh, city was trying to cover up graffiti tags. Unfortunately, the brown paint people don't always just restrict themselves to graffiti tags. You know, more carvings, nice lettering on Ilga here, you know, very fancy uh, font, you know, typography, which I love. Yeah, and then that's almost like script. Like Gigi, and it's like script. Well, semi script, but there are what there are signatures here that are actually in script, which is always impressive. And here is what we call the triptych. So on this rock, three carvings, probably by three different people. Uh -huh. um, you know, as years goes on, fewer people will know what this is. I, I say like young people probably don't know what those things sticking out of. Okay, but, so hang on. Those I should TV be able antenna. to do this. So <laughs> X is 10. So that's seven. No, <laughs> it says Nixon. Oh, that's an N. Yeah, it's an oh N. Oh my gosh. So, so exactly what they were getting at with Nixon, I don't know, but it's like a TV set with the dollar sign on the screen and then Nixon underneath. That's hilarious. You have Here, I thought it was the, one of the more <laughs> sensitive things, uh, the crosses of Calvary, and I'm sure whoever wrote Dead Ha Ha probably was not the person who carved the crosses, but then this really, really well carved fish. Uh, you know, nicely carved. Unfortunately, someone has been recently, I can see from the white, Outlining, someone has been scratching along the outline there, which is not a good thing to do. People should leave these alone. Anyways, though, it's a really nice, you know, fish, which is, of course is a very appropriate yeah. theme for uh, fish, the bathing beauty, Chicago Lakefront, and then yeah. India. And, you know, the carvings continue on and off all the way up here. We probably don't want to do the whole tour, but I do want to show uh, one example of the paintings. This whole stretch here used to be painted. Um, and has been painted for many years, for decades, people have been coming out here and doing paintings. You can see, you know, this is a fairly recent painting. They don't last yeah. long because <laughs> most paintings here fade. Sort of an abstract symbol, you know, not sure. An example of one that you can still make out is Mickey here. But I like to call this Drunk Mickey. So this painting has been here for about 20 years, but four or five years ago, someone came out here and refreshed it. And the reason I call it Drunk Mickey, aside from his sort of very jovial expression is there's a big bottle at his feet overturned and pouring out so um, I think he's been imbibing a little bit but there's lots there have been over the years lots of other paintings here um, some of them newer some of them older you can see up there there's actually a, a fairly recent painting that was done this year um, and there's there's like the remains of a Charlie Brown up there there's actually another Mickey Mouse remains that you can barely see we have the moon here. Um, that's fairly. That's another one that I think was refreshed. That's an older painting that someone refreshed. There's an artist who I've seen out here all several times over the summer who's done beautiful chalk drawings, actually of moon faces, like faces kind of moon shaped. Uh, but they're chalk drawings, so they got washed away uh, as soon as it rains. But he's been out here a lot. He actually did some paintings. Unfortunately, um, when the city was out here coming up for beauty, they covered these paintings as well as some of the other really nice paintings, but uh, someone was a little overly enthusiastic with the brown paint. But still, people still will be coming out here doing paintings as long as this is here. Um, you know, sort of a nice canvas. And the paintings here are interesting. They're not typical graffiti. Right. You know, they're not, they don't look like it. And, uh, you know, I, I say more power to them. I think it's wonderful that people, are, you know, want to make art and just share That's it for beautiful. the joy of sharing it, which is the same of, with the carvings. You know, there was no, I mean, none of these weren't commissioned. These were just spontaneous creations. Um, and actually what I like to say is collectively, I, I see them as sort of this popular monument to life on the lakefront, which after all is Chicago's greatest amenity and achievement. And in fact, you know, I've done a fair amount of time trying to find anything similar anywhere in the world. In terms of carvings that were been made over the last century, this is unique, there's nothing like it. And unfortunately, hardly anyone knows about them. And and, they're, and up here, they're not so much at risk, but the ones in Hyde Park are in sort of in, imminent peril because the city has projects underway to rebuild the lakefront, which it needs. Right. Um, but unless the city really, someone really makes the city understand that these carvings have merit, 
they'll just be bulldozed and they've already there's already been some loss just in the last couple of years through emergency repairs so up here they're safer because this is relatively new this was all built in the mid 50s and is in reasonably good condition so there's nothing imminent here but other places it's not so uh, safe so other than drawing attention to it which i think the book is really trying to do what what can people do to help save the carvings <laughs> Draw attention to it. Tell their friends. You know, get get them known. Um, you know, if you live in Hyde Park, yeah, call the alderman. I, I read an anecdote recently that you know some people may have heard of the Belmont Rocks, which was this huge hangout for the gay community in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and they were bulldozed in 2003. But there was an anecdote about Tom Tunney, the alderman, going out with with, with someone else and, and someone from the project and personally identifying rocks he wanted them to save because of the carvings or the artwork on them. And that got no publicity at the time. And in fact, I only just read about it buried in a Facebook group. Um, but I think that's what it takes is someone who's in a position to, of influence with the city saying these are valuable and, and, and at least pay attention to them. And you may not be able to salvage all of them when you do these projects, but you might be able to save some of them. And they did at Belmont and Diversity and they actually did at Fullerton Avenue as well. And where are those now? Well, so if you if you go between Diversity Harbor and Belmont Harbor, it's mostly concrete, uh -huh. soulless concrete a lot of people yeah. would say, yeah. but along the edge of, along the top edge of that concrete there's a line of about 200 of these blocks just like Got here it. and some of them have carvings, some of them still have paintings from 20 years ago. Um, and then at Fullerton, if you ever go to a theater on the lake, there's a beautiful little seating area there where there are carvings and then scattered throughout the park there, there are carvings. Those were saved because the landscape architect that the city hired to work on the park when they expanded Lincoln Park there was aware, for whatever reason, was aware of the carvings and got them to save as many as she could as she could and reuse them as part of the park, which is what I'd like to see them do in Hyde Park as well, ultimately, but we shall see. So there was a little antidote that you told me about and we'll show you the spot later. Yes. But, um, so, in a weird kind of way, our, our rocks may be famous in... They should be famous. ...film lore yes. as well. Is that, um, if you're familiar with Greece, the movie, um, you may know that the play that the movie was based on was originally set in Chicago. And it was about a bunch of kids who went to Taft High School and who hung out where? At Foster Avenue Beach. And in fact, in the original play, there is a song called Foster Avenue Beach. Unfortunately, when Greece went to Broadway, they dropped the, they dropped Foster Beach in the Chicago location. That song eventually evolved into the song that became a monster hit in the movie called Summer Nights, right. um, which many people would be familiar with. The minute you start hearing it, you know the song. But the Foster Beach song even had a line in it, a beautiful lyric about how he left in the he, he left a summer souvenir he painted our names in a heart on the rocks at Foster Avenue Beach. So this is where they hung out and just ahead of us is there's a, there's a beautiful picture of the playwright Jim Jacobs sitting on the rocks at Foster Beach and I'm pretty sure the picture was taken just ahead of us over here. So really the coolest I'm sure he has ever looked in his life sitting, I think, I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure based on my analysis of the photography right down there in front of this rock with all the names on it. So what I do like to think is that some of these people who carve their names here might be people who ended up as characters in Greece. That's awesome. Which oh, I don't that's think is awesome. too far-fetched. What I think would be really cool, and I don't know if you, have you met anyone that's done the carvings? I think you've met I, I have. you said. One carver, but I talked on the phone to a handful of others, and yeah, it, is, it was great. I mean, being able to track them down and basically in most cases, the ones I tracked down were because they had kind of odd names, uh -huh. unique names. So I was able to Google them and, and and actually find them. But, you know, a couple of sweet stories. You know, there are, you know, the, the carver I was talking to who he carved, he was a carver, at, carved his name at Rainbow Beach. And he also carved a heart, it said Buzz and Kathy. And, you know, I tracked him down because elsewhere he carved his name, which was an interesting name. And he said, and when I interviewed, when I was interviewing, he said, yeah, and Kathy is sitting here with me right now. That's so awesome. Which was very <laughs> sweet. Um, and a couple other carvers I, I've communicated with, 
who carved their girlfriend's name who are also still married. So if you know any carvers out there, send them those ways. Oh, absolutely. I would, I would love to, to find, home. I would love to find more carvers. Um, particularly the guy, there, there are about a dozen carvings north and south here on Foster Beach, all by the same person who, they, who carved these um, sort of Mayan, they look like ancient Mayan carvings. And the reason they do is they were based on ancient Mayan carvings. They're very complicated. If we walk further, but they're quite a bit further north, and then there's a couple that are on those rocks there. Really beautiful, elaborate, complicated carvings. I saw him carving them in, 19, in the mid-90s, but I didn't talk to him. Right. So I would love to find out who that yeah, guy was. Um, so tell me, where would people buy this? Well, you can buy it at a few local stores, uh, Book Table in Oak Park, City Lit in Logan Square, the Intuit Museum Store, or you can go to lakefrontanonymous.com and you can buy it directly online there. Thank you. Thanks for this. This was a wonderful You're welcome. day. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Hi, it's Lisa again from the Bloom Group. Don't forget to like the video. And if you'd like what you've seen, subscribe to the channel for more information on Chicago's top neighborhoods and tips and tricks in the real estate market.